My mom and dad tried 15 times to have a girl baby, but ended up with 15 boys. We lived in a back house just off Crook Street, close to the Dry River. A colorless gray, two small room square cement shack. One tiny bathroom and another closet size impression of a kitchen. We bathed in an old round tin tub with bath water we had to boil. My dad worked for the Santa Fe Railroad. He and my mom came from Texas and Texarkana, Arkansas. My dad left the South first after he got into a conflict with a white man and punched him, which was a hanging event for a black man back in the 1940s. So he left traveling as far away as he could, landing in Barstow, California, in the Mojave Desert. There were hardly any fences on the river bottom where we lived. The soft sands rolled under and past the Black Bridge. Black Bridge was all still with boats like small biscuits. When I lay under the bridge and the trains ran across, I felt its power like a herd of elephants or bison stampeding across the sky. I watched the different shapes the train shadows created on the white sands. Usually I wore no shoes so I could feel the sands of the river as my feet sunk into them. When I stepped out of the, our house on Crook Street, the purple and red clay mountains that surrounded me, they seemed to hold the whole world. I thought up was, must be the only way out, so I had a habit of walking with my head held back, my eyes looking upward. I ran into things, trees, doors, and fences. Still, I kept my head up. Somehow I knew the universe was limitless. I looked for hours into the sky while lying on the sand dune along the dry river bottom. I had a secret spot beside the river, and sometimes I would whistle and semi-wild dogs would come, running from all directions. When the star was out, I felt there was something hidden behind each one, as if the stars played hide and seek off and on like fireflies. Whenever I saw a rainbow strung across the sky from Bee Hill to the mountains, I thought of a series of brilliantly colored sidewalks, each one leading to a new adventure, each one having his own mystery. Other times I saw the rainbow as a gateway into a dream, a new dimension, something everlasting. Life seemed to go on forever. The stars, like the semi-wild dogs, were loyal to themselves, and they always shone together, even on the darkest night. We had domestic animals on our land, chickens, rabbits, pigeons, turkeys, greyhounds, and hogs. I could sit for hours, for an entire day sometimes, watching them. Across the dry river or half a mile or so from the backside of my house, I watched road runners, lizards, rattlesnakes, jack and cottontail rabbits, assorted desert birds. Yet I always longed to see more exotic creatures, the kinds I have read about and had seen in picture books at school. I wanted to see pythons, elephants, bears, whales, and zebras. I wanted to see the large birds of prey, even vultures and buzzards. I wanted to see crocodiles and black panthers. I wanted to see big cats and lions and tigers that inhabited faraway places. So I was very excited about a first field trip. The Parks and Recreation Department ran a summer enrichment program to give children things to do. Sporting events, excursions. One trip was to San Diego Zoo. I couldn't wait. The night before, I didn't get any sleep. I was up and dressed by 3 a.m. waiting. We were to embark on this adventure from the Catholic school. Everyone gathered around the huge yellow school buses as we were loaded onto them. I sat looking out the window thinking of all the animals I would get to see. Then another boy came and sat beside me. I wanted to be alone in a seat to myself to observe. So when the kid would not leave, I beat him up. Nothing bloody alone. I was immediately kicked off the bus by one of the adults as I stood there watching the yellow vehicles pull away from the sidewalk. One by one, a part of my heart pulled away with each bus. My heart dropped like a sparrow that had been shot. I sat down on the curb in the early morning sunshine and watched the wagons full of smiling children go their way. 
I would have preferred a paddling instead of missing this field trip. At least my mom and dad were not around, so they could not know the reason I was bounced off the bus. For the home beating stung far worse than the paddlings I got at school. Sometimes my dad caught me with extension cards in a bathtub. An extension card on a wet, naked body stings like a whip. Dogs, cats, coyotes, and other howlers would have envied how loudly I bellowed. When the beatings was over, my skin was a fire puffed up in places as though a lash with a whip. Other times when I thought I had gotten away with something, I lay sleeping in bed or on the floor or on the couch, only to be awakened by a water hose, a tree branch, or extension card. The only safe place was my spot under the house, a place where only dogs, snakes, and spiders lived. I never went that far under, and I had to come out for food, school, church, and even eventually the whipping. Unlike the beatings at school, though, my mom and dad beat me for a reason. When I knew myself that I had done something wrong, or had broken a family rule or sin. I am sure my parents based their whippings on the Bible, some verse about sparing the rod. Although I had no concept of God, Jesus, or sin, I understood their whippings for stealing, staying out late, or sneaking out of church services. People at school never spoke with me about why they paddled or slapped me. No one at school ever showed me they cared. Whereas after the beatings at home, my mom was still there, breakfast and dinner was still served. My mom never failed to accept me no matter what law of society I had broken. When I got older and the cops took me to the police station, my mom would pick me up as soon as she could or she'd have the cops drop me off at home. Sure, I would get another whipping for truancy or shoplifting or whatever I had done, but my mom and dad left no doubt that I was part of a family. <laughs> 